hail. Hello from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. This is C.P. McGregor speaking and welcoming you to another performance of your War Department program, Proudly We Hail. Through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, we present Mr. Wayne Morris as the star of our show, Between Stations, written by Tom Petty with music by Eddie Skrivanek. Clark Reed, a private detective from Chicago, hurrying from Manhattan's Pennsylvania station to Grand Central Terminal. It's a short taxi ride, but there's lots of scenery. Hey, taxi! Yeah. Taxi! Take me to Grand Central and you get a buck for every minute you cut off 15. Just a minute, sport. I'm taking this cab. Oh, sure, if you're going to Grand Central, climb in. There's plenty of room. I'm going there, all right, but I'm going alone. Well, that's a good idea, but I don't like it. Climb in or start walking. Let's go, driver. Hold it, Bugsy. I'm gonna have to clip. Hey, 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 watch it, King. Here comes the starter. Get in, we'll dump the pigeon later. You guys know each other, huh? Well, the offer still goes, Bugsy. And I'm no pigeon. You'll be a dead pigeon if you don't get wise and beat it. The only thing I'm interested in beating right now is the clock. I've got to catch that Boston train if it's the last thing I ever do. Maybe it will be, sport. Tell the gentleman whose cab this is, Bugsy. It ain't mine, mister. Next stop's the end of the line for you, sport. I'm in a hurry, so I'm letting you out in one piece. Oh, okay, okay. Now I know you mean it. I can feel the nose of that rod in your coat pocket. It's burning me like dry ice. So you're Mr. King, huh? And Bugsy's your man Friday. This is a hot cab. You don't like cops, and you got to run on schedule. It's beginning to add up. Shut up. You talk too much. <laughs> I like to talk. And I'm beginning to enjoy this ride. I like the scenery. A couple of cops in every block. You boys don't like cops, but I think they're wonderful. Oh, uh, come on. Let them have it, King. Let them have it now. Keep driving. Now, don't scare me, boys. There's cops around, and I might yell. Come on. I'll gun the motor, boss. Quit beating your gums, Bugsy. We got to be clean when we pick up Faye. Yeah. Well, after that happens, you'll have to bump them. It'll be a pleasure. You guys make me nervous. There's Times Square ahead, Bugsy. You better head for the station or I'll yell for a cop. If it was me, King, I'd let him have it right here on the avenue. Keep your mind on your job. They ought to show up any second. Who's this Faye Dane? Say, what are you guys running anyway, a bus line? There she is, Bugsy. Over by the bank entrance. Uh, yeah, 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 I see her. Slow down. Head for the alley. <laughs> Oh, so this is what we've been waiting for. Look <laughs> hey, that guy run. He knocked the woman down. You see too much. Seeing is my business. And you're going out of business right now. Oh, good. He's been begging for it. Maybe it'll keep him quiet till I can finish him. Hey, hey, get the door open. Here's Faith. Get in. Oh, here it is. Did you get the satchel, Faye? Oh. The right one? Oh, of course. Say, no, King, that was some job. <laughs> some idea of yours, too. Handbags just alike. We switched when he bumped me, like we planned. Come on. Let's have a peek inside. Hey, hold it. Who's your sleeping friend? Hitchhiker we picked up at Penn Station. Huh. Oh, don't let him bother you. He's on his last ride. Huh. Now, wait. There. Oh. There, I got it open. <laughs> now I get my main coat. Must be close oh. to $100,000. Uh, hundred grand. Hey, oh. let me see him. Let me see him. Watch that wheel, Bugsy. Ooh. Oh, boy. You play rough, King. Well, listen. It talks. Yeah. Must have a rubber head. Well, so this is Spay. Aren't you going to introduce us, King? You wouldn't like her. I liked him better when he was sleeping. It's kind of crowded now. I'm going to take care of that right now. Race your motor, Bugsy. Give me a couple of backfires. Yeah, okay. Two backfires coming up, King. Oh, no, you don't. Hey, officer. Officer, quiet, quiet you. Shot quiet. Him. Bugsy, oh, Bugsy. Quiet. Bugsy. Officer. Slow down. Here comes the cop. I'll do the talking. Uh, what's all the yelling about? 
Well, these, uh, these people have just helped rob a bank, officer, and they're, they're trying to kill me. <laughs> Sorry, officer. There was some shooting down the avenue, and it upset him. Oh, he, he's my husband, officer, and, and he's sick. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. He's a mental case, and we're taking him to the hospital. Oh, they're, they're lying, officer. Can't you see that? Oh, no, no, fella. You take it easy. Oh, you be quiet, darling. Please. Please, for me. Nobody's going to hurt you while I'm here. Oh, sh- we can handle him. Well, get him off my block. You're holding up traffic. Thanks, officer. No, wait. Wait a minute, officer. Wait a minute. They're trying to kill me. Our story starring Wayne Morris will continue immediately, following an important message from a distinguished state official, the Honorable Horace Hildreth, governor of the state of Maine, who said recently, The American people, through unified effort, untold sacrifice, and the determination to win, have been instrumental in victoriously concluding the first global war in our history. The victory, won at the cost of more than a million American lives, must be zealously and vigilantly safeguarded. The regular army of the United States offers to young men the opportunity to serve the cause of maintaining the peace and our national security, and concurrently avail themselves of the many benefits to be enjoyed by short or long-term enlistments. This call for a new peacetime regular army is addressed to every man between the ages of 17 and 34, those still in service, those who have recently left the service, and those young men who soon will be eligible for service under selective service laws. It is essential that we acquire a volunteer army of intelligent, highly qualified men. We cannot face the age of atomic power with anything less than the highest caliber of troops. To facilitate this task, the Congress has designed a modern American pattern for regular army life, including inducements of which the old army never dreamed. Service in the new regular army might now be called the world's best job. Few positions in life offer the same long-term advantages in pay, advancement, security, travel, and education. would you like to be in Clark Reed's shoes? Five more long blocks to go to make that Boston train and death two inches away. Come on, come on, say something, somebody. I gotta get to Boston. Aren't these cops interested in bank robbers and murders? No, sport. The cops don't care about pigeons. They're busy watching traffic and keeping cars moving. Please, officer. Bear down on the horn whenever he yells, Bugsy. Please, officer. Okay, okay, you win. Now I know how that guy felt when he cried water, water everywhere and not a drop to drink. I could almost touch that last cop and he never even looked when I yelled. I'm jumpy from the stick up. I can't take a whole lot more of this Gabin King. You won't have to, baby. Yeah, let's get it over with. We're almost at Grand Central. Hey, look out, King. He's waving out the window. I've been watching him. He's trying to signal. <laughs> I want to make a left turn. There he goes again. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm waving to a brother moose out there. Just forget your distress signal, sport. It won't work. Only two blocks to go, boss. We gotta get rid of them. I'll do it in front of the station. There's a lot of noise there. Gee, but but this cab's hot, King. What do I do with him? Head for the warehouse fast after you put us out. Yeah? Well, where are we gonna hide out? Don't worry, baby. I've got a place in Boston. We're catching the train sport is gonna miss. Got it all worked out, huh? Hundred thousand dollars. You think you'll ever see your cut, Bugsy? I better see it fast. You know, uh, maybe those cops will be waiting for you at the warehouse. King looks like a double-crosser to me. Shut up. Uh, Maybe the guy's talking sense. I'll keep your shirt on, Bugsy. I'll be watching King. Yeah, and who'll be watching you, sweetheart? I don't trust Dane. Break down, both of you. When I finish with him, Bugsy, take him to the warehouse like I told you. The boys will dump the hot car in the body at the same time. Well... You sure everything's Jake? Of course. Have I ever let you down, Bugsy? Look, look, uh, fellas. If you're making all those plans for me, you're wasting your time. I'm catching the Boston train. All right, Bugsy. Make with the horn. This is it. Oh! Oh, that car's going to hit us! Why, that... Oh! Oh. Oh. Hey. Hey, what's 
much happened anyway. Oh, it looks like every car in town's following us. <laughs> sure, didn't I tell you? New York's having a moose convention. Hey, hey, hey they got me jammed. I, I can't move an inch. What did you throw out the window? Something that everybody's interested in, even cops. You better think fast, King. Stand back, everybody. Hey, you and the cat. Where's the guy who's been throwing $5 bills out the window? Right here. He's out of his mind. I'll say he is. I guess you men had better take him off our hands. He's too much for his wife and me. We'll get him a nice straight jacket. Oh, look, look, I'm getting tired of that gag. I'm not crazy. Officer, arrest these people. They're bank robbers. Oh, oh poor dear sport. He ought to be in a hospital. My name's not Sport. It's Clark Reed. Clark Reed's a private dick from Chicago. And nobody ever saw a private dick throw away money. <laughs> you have. Here, uh, take a look at my license. Well, yeah, you're Clark Reed, all right. Now, uh, catch another gander at the license inside the cab. Hmm. Why, the picture doesn't match the driver. It's a hot cab. Hey, hey, stop that man! Where's the bag? Oh, here it is. Uh, take a look inside. Holy smoke, it's full of dough. Hey, wait a minute, Reed. What were you doing in the cab? Well, I went along for the ride, and darn near got taken for one. Well, they're all yours, officer. I gotta be going. I got three minutes to catch a train. Well, sorry, you'll have to stick. We'll need you as a witness. Oh, but look, I gotta get to Boston. It's a matter of life and death. Now, I did you a favor. How about doing one for me? Send a cop along to Garby if you don't think I'll be back for the reward. You'll be back, but I think I'll send Joe along to keep you company. Okay, come on, Joe. Throw it in high. We're going to Boston. The Red Sox are playing the Yanks tomorrow, and I've got a box seat. The curtain falls on our play, Between Stations, starring Wayne Morris. The United States Regular Army today is the largest volunteer military force in history. However, still more men are needed to fulfill our worldwide interests and obligations. Personal advantages to be gained in military service are greater today than ever before. Proudly We Hail is pleased to present Major General Harold N. Gilbert, Assistant, the Adjutant General for Military Personnel Procurement for the War Department, General Gilbert. It has been my privilege to supervise the recruiting of the largest volunteer regular army in the history of this country. Building such an army has may been made possible by our ability to offer high-caliber, intelligent young men a vocational opportunity which compares most favorably with opportunities in business and industry. We are urging young men to consider an enlistment in the regular army from a practical standpoint. For example, check the answers to these three questions. Are you making at least $3,000 a year? Every regular army soldier is provided with food, clothing, quarters, and services, plus cash, equivalent to a yearly income of more than $3,000. Do you have the opportunity to learn a valuable trade or technical skill? The regular Army's excellent service schools are turning soldiers in over 200 different trades and skills, and graduates receive further on-the-job experience using the most modern tools and equipment. Are you providing for future security? The regular Army soldier may retire at half pay after only 20 years' service, or at three-quarters pay after 30 years' service. He is eligible for the benefits of National Service Life Insurance, and receives the finest medical and dental care. Obviously, an enlistment in the regular army is an outstanding job opportunity. The proof is the record of 747,899 men who have already checked the facts and have chosen a career in this fine profession. Thank you, General Gilbert, and our thanks also to Mr. Wayne Morris and Governor Hildreth for appearing on this program. Proudly We Hail will come to you again over this station next week. Listen in. <laughs>